This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks everyone for joining us in the Shtib over here. Um, this is our last year before Purim, and uh, tonight's shir, the shir on Sefer Shmois, our sponsor by the Zakheim family, Lele Nishmas, Rav Shlema Eliezer Ben Harav Yaakov Zakheim, and sponsored by the Israeli family, Lele Nishmas Mayor. Ben Dovin and Shamash and Heaven Aliyah, the Melitza Yisharm to their entire Mishpacha, Sabi Eskel Tzedek, and tonight's share is sponsored by our dear friend of Gedalia Schwartz, and uh, we thank him for all of his efforts on behalf of the, the Shurim. In Israel, my nephew, my, my grandson. And Sandra's grandson is in Israel. Gedalia so, Schwartz. what? Gedalia Schwartz. Oh, <laughs> maybe not that one. Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks everyone for joining. This is something that's uh, been brewing a li- for a little bit, but it's brand new material, very exciting material, on Purim. We all know that the Yalkut Shemoni Darshans on the Pasuk, These days are remembered and they're observed in all generations, Mishpacha o Mishpacha, in every family, Medino Medina, in every country, the ear the ear in every city. Vimeha Purim Oila and these days of Purim, Lo Yavru Mitoicha Yehudim will never cease from the Jewish people. About which the Yalkut Shemoni Darshins, an amazing drasha. If you look at the end of number two, there's the Yalkut Shemoni in Mishlei, in Parsha Yotes Ois Tav Tav Kuf Mem Dalad. Kol Hamoya Dimasidon Libato. One day all the holidays will be nullified. Pesach, no, it's all over. No programs. No Orlando. No, no Pesach, no Shavuos, no Yom, Ki- no Yom Kippur, no Lag Ba'oimer. According to this, no Yom Kippur, no Lag Ba'oimer, no Arbor Day, nothing. No Tu B'Shvat. The only holiday that there will be is Vimei HaPurim Einam B'Telem Olam. Purim is the only Yom Tif that will never be Bato. Why would that be? Now, we've explained uh, in a number of Shurim, that this is not to be taken literally, chas v'shalem, no yom tif will ever stop, will ever cease. We have a principle that Torah zuloi te there won't be any, that's the second opinion, but the first opinion disagrees. So, the, but we, we, we have a tradition that uh, the Torah will never change. And what it means, according to most, is that the significance of the yom tovim will be diminished, but why is it that Purim will always remain in full force for all eternity? What is the kavan of the Medrash that forever and ever Purim will be observed? What's the meaning of, the, of this comment in the Medrash? Okay, so we know there's a very interesting halacha, and that is Purim is the only Yom Tif that, depending where you live, it depends how you observe the Yom Tif, you know? We live in, uh, even Cedar Bay Park has chves, the animal hospital sign, and it has a little fence, it is not considered a walled city from the time of Yehoshua ben Nun. Now there's actually, it's interesting, there's a machlekes in the Gemara, when we determine, right, we know that a unwalled city reads the Megillah on the 14th. A walled city reads the Megillah on the 15th. When does the wall have to be from? There's an opinion it has to be from the time of the miracle of Purim. But we basically paskin, and what the Mishnah says is, from the time of Yehoshua ben Nun. Question is, you know, what does Yeshua ben Nun got to do with the story of Purim? Yeshua ben Nun was hundreds of years before before Purim. Why do we determine the status of a walled city, whether it has a wall around it from the time of Yeshua ben Nun? So this is the question of the run. The, the, the whole concept of why it should be different, just because it's a walled city, so what? Who cares? Okay, right, okay. So, what is the wall sitting up to well, f- firstly, we know that in Shushan they had an extra day to destroy their enemies and they rested on a different day. So, we understand why in Shushan. All right, we understand why in Shushan they have Purim on the 15th. But why do other cities that have a wall around it also celebrate on the 15th? The answer is because they're more comparable to Shushan. But why is the determining factor of how do we age the wall by Yoshua ben Nun? Why, why not from the story of Purim? Yoshua sure had to do with the, with the wall. He you know, broke down the wall. So, you know, so did uh, the United States of America. They made a wall after World War II, you know? They made a wall now, but it's not completed. Maybe we should do it from uh, when Trump built a wall by Mexico. Any, any city that has a wall, since Trump put up the wall by the border, what does Yoshua ben Nun have to do with it? What, 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 is, uh, what does this have to do with anything? 
So the Rajba says, because Yeshua ben Nun was the first one who went to war against Amalek, so that's connected to Purim. But the Ran says, you know what Yeshua ben Nun has to do with it? That if we're going to say that any city that has a wall around it from the time of the miracle of Purim celebrates Purim on the 15th, then Yushalayim did not have a wall around it in the times of uh, the miracle of Purim. The wall was breached, the wall was broken. So it would be embarrassing to Yushalayim. So in order to be Mechabed Yerushalayim in Eretz Yisrael, the determining factor of when the wall has to be standing by is if it had a wall from the time of Yehoshua ben Nun, because that's when Yushalayim did have a wall around it. We want it to be Mechabed Eretz Yisrael. That's the Pshad of the Ran. That in order to be Mechabed Eretz Yisrael, the Lashon of the Ran is Kedei Lach Loik Kavoid L'Eretz Yisrael in order to give honor and prestige to the Holy Land. And comes the Kloisenberger Rebbe, the Baal Shef Achayim, Rev um, Yikusiel, Yehuda, Halberstam, and one of the great heroes of the Jewish people of the last century. He asks, why all of a sudden when it comes to eating and dining on Purim, all of a sudden now we want to honor Eretz Yisrael. All of a sudden, on Purim, we want to give cover to Eretz Yisrael. You want to give cover to Eretz Yisrael? On Pesach, we have no interest in giving cover to Eretz Yisrael. Unlike Boimer, nobody's interested in Eretz Yisrael. All of a sudden, Purim, it becomes, you know, the Israeli day parade on Purim. Well, what, what, what does Purim have to do with Eretz Yisrael that all of a sudden Purim comes and we want to honor the Holy Land? Interesting custom. This is not a custom among Hasidim. This is a custom among the Tzadike Ashkenaz. And that is, they eat the Purim Suda and they continue the Suda into the Laila. Now, maybe Bizman Hazed, the Hasidim, have adopted it. But officially, it is not the Minog of Hasidim. Actually, officially, it's Dafka, not the Minog of Hasidim. Officially, it's only the Minog of Tzadike Ashkenaz. But it's recorded by the Chassam Soifer. If you look at number five, Chassam Soifer writes, Sudas Purim, Sha'ach la Balayla, la Yatsa, Yedei Chavasa. If you, you, you have this Purim Suda at night, let's say the night after, you're not Yoytse the Mitzvah. However, Mikal Mokoim Noyagim la Hamshech Suda, la Layla Shala Achrav. The Minog is, is, we keep it going. In fact, the Kloisenberg Rebbe in the Shafachayim, in the Shal Shudas Torah, number 18, he brings that the Gedoylem and Kedoshim of Chachmei Ashkenaz, they take the meal into the night, but many tzaddikim and in sons, they dafka don't do that. Okay, fine. But we have to understand what is the pshat in uh, the minog of Chachmei Ashkenaz to, da- to take the Purim Suda into the night. They I mean, start it's, before. Uh, before they start right? before, but what are they continuing for? What are they doing? They do the same thing. If Shal- a guy... Shal- t- Shal- Shudas know the same thing. So, yeah, but the Hasidim do Shal Shudas, they're, they're Marach on Shabbos, because yeah. the Kedusha of Shabbos, yeah. but Purim is over, you know. Mm-hmm. Imagine a guy, he wants to be Marach in the Dalet Minim, so on Isru Chag, what do you call a guy who's still shaking his Lul and Esrig Matzoy Yomtif? You call him a Meshugana. No, <laughs> well, what's he doing? It's over, he's not doing anything. There's no, you can't, you're not accomplishing anything. So in, in, in a sense, if somebody is eating the Purim Suda at night, he ain't doing anything. What's he doing? Purim is over. There's no Indian of continuing this. But that's Minog Ashkenaz. So that's another thing we want to understand. So number one, what's the pshat that Purim will never become battle? All the other Yom Tovim will become battle. Purim will never be battle. Number two, what's the pshat in the Ran? Why Adafka, when it comes to Purim, are we interested in giving Kavay to Eretz Yisrael and Yushalayim? Question number three, what's the pshat in the Minog to start the Suda B'yoyim and to continue it B'layla. Another interesting thing. In, in the olden days, I'm sure there are many kids that still do it today, but it's not so popular. In, uh, they say Kroivitz on Purim. Yeah? Why should we say it, by the way? They didn't say that, No, we never said Why should we say Raise your hand if your shul says Kroivitz on Purim. There you go. You're outnumbered. Okay. Now, by the way, what does the, I'm in the right number, though. What uh, does the word Kroivitz mean? Kroivitz uh, is a Rosh Hashanah. Koil, Rina, the Yeshua, the Ahale Sadikim. Kroivitz stands for the song, the voice of song 
and salvation in the tents of the righteous. So it was written by the, one of the Paitanim, and each bracha of Shemana Esrei has a different piyot to add to the Shemana Esrei of uh, the Chazor Sashats of Purim Shachris. And mysteriously, there is one bracha that there's no kroivitz for. And which bracha is that? Es Tzemach David Avdecha Mehera Satzmiach. There is no kroivitz for Es Tzemach David. So we discussed a Mahalach last year. We had a very uh, beautiful pshat. The Sifre Chasidus basically say that Purim is the day of Shol HaMelech. Purim is the day Shol, Shol got his tikkun. And David and Shol don't quite get along. So David says, Shol, on your day, leave me out of this. You have your day, and let me know when it's over. And we said a hope shot. That's why Rebbe, who came from David, he was planting a tree on Purim. What kind of tree? The tree of Malachim, saying, Look, Mordechai, have your day, but don't forget who the kings belong to. Don't usurp the Malucha. Rav Herschel Schachter in his Sefer says uh, a very simple pshat, why there's no kravitz for a Semach David, and that's because a Semach David is not really a separate bracha from Vilu Shalayim Recha, Bracham Toshev. That's why Vilu Shalayim Recha, Semach David was originally one bracha. It's brought in the Toysus Ritim, Sech Sukkah. But I think, based on what we're going to learn tonight, perhaps there's another important reason why there's no kravitz on the bracha of a Semach David on Purim. Yeah, but it's going to cost you if you want to say it on the shir. Is it worth it? Go for it, yeah? I think they forgot. They forgot. Mm. You've said better. <laughs> okay. So that's another interesting question. This question is raised by Rav Pinchas Karatzer. And by the way, Rav Pinchas Karatzer brings down this idea that since Purim is the day of Shal HaMelech, David says, you know, keep me out of this day. I don't want to... I don't want to mention on this day, you have your day in the sun, Shal, but David and Shal, don't, uh, they don't mix. And that's why in Hoshana Rabbah, which is the day of David, in the piyutim of Hoshana Rabbah, we don't mention Shal, even though we mention every other tzaddik in the world, including Noyach and Gidoin. I mean, when do we ever mention Gidoin? So everybody gets their credits on Hoshana Rabbah except for Shal. Why? Because Hoshana Rabbah is the day of David. On David's day, Shal says, leave me out of this. On Shal's day, David says, leave me out of this. So the, Right. Coming back. So we're giving even like more, like, you have biblical holidays in there that you have for matches, pay it off, even right. the, the three. Yeah, so, so it's right. It seems like, so why? It's an amazing thing. Pesach will be finished with. Sukkot will be finished right, with. Right, and so Purim, right. which is Rabbanon, right, so we're going to have forever and ever. That just magnifies the question. It strengthens the question. It makes the question um, more severe. Another interesting thing to think about. This question uh, we discussed in years past, and we're going to revisit. The famous Gemara, Misha Nichnas Adar Marvin Besimcha. Where is the Gemara? Tainis Chavtes. But the Gemara doesn't say that. The Gemara says, Kishem Shem Misha Nichnas Av Mematin Besimcha. Just like when the month of Av comes in, we diminish our joy. Kach Misha Nichnas Adar Marvin Besimcha. So too, when the month of Adar comes in, we increase our joy. So why doesn't the Gemara just say, when the month of Adar comes in, we increase our joy? What does it have to do with diminishing joy in Av? Just like we diminish joy in Av, so too we increase joy in Adar. What's, well, what does one thing have to do with the other? If Adar is a happy time, be happy in Adar. If Av is a sad time, be sad in Av. Because we're sad in Av, therefore we're happy in Adar? What does the sadness in Av have to do with the happiness in Adar? Another interesting question. The Shulchan Aruch paskins and records and codifies the following halacha. Mishanichnas av mematin besimcha. You know that, Bari? You look in the Shulchan Aruch. He says, when av comes in, be sad. You have a court case with the guy, you have a parking ticket, push it off. The Shulchan Aruch does not say, Mishanichnas ador marbin besimcha. He doesn't pass in that way. The Gemara says it. Shulchan Aruch doesn't bring it down. It's not brought l'halacha. Shulchan Aruch does not paskin. In other words, according to Shulchan Aruch, you're miserable in Av, and you don't have to be happy in Adar. Why? Why? Why would the Shulchan Aruch bring down the halacha, Mishanechnas Av Mematin B'Simcha, not bring down the halacha, Mishanechnas Adar Marbin B'Simcha? It's an interesting halacha. 
There is a halacha, it's not really observed that much. The Shulchan Aruch brings the number 10, Sim Tav Kof Samach, that somebody who sets a table for guests, don't serve everything. Don't serve, leave out a dish. Why? Zechel Chorben. And I, I was very mackered on that tonight. I, I didn't bring out anything. I have a whole Suda, five courses, and I decided not to serve anything. Very mackered. Very mackered. Sold by the wall. What? Sold by the wall. Mishanichna, so, so the halach and the Shulchan Aruch is when, a, when you have guests over, you leave something over, and Shulchan Aruch says, you should leave one setting empty. You have one setting, nobody sits there. Why? Zechel Chorben. Why don't we do this? Unclear why we don't do this. But that's the halacha in Shulchan Aruch. He says, um, That's the halacha in Shulchan Aruch. You invite a guest, you leave a setting empty. Zechel Chorben. Comes Rabbi Yaakov Emden, and Rabbi Yaakov says, even though, and by the way, the Taz writes, even for Sudas Mitzvah, you have to leave over a place empty, you have to make a Zechel Chorben. You're making a Siyam on a Masechta, you make a Zechel Chorben. You have a wedding, Avada, you have to make a Zechel Chorben. Why? Says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, there's one meal a year, you don't make a Zechel Chorben. Purim. You don't make a Zechel Chorben on Purim. Says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, Nirali, Shein Tzarech Lizar, Besud Asperim, Lasa Zechel Aver Yosishayim. Why? You ready for Rabbi Yaakov Emden? Kivan Dechayev Lebesume Bepurai Adolayel. You have to drink until you don't know the difference between Arham and Baruch Mordechai. You don't make a Zechel Lechorben on Purim. Huh? What does one thing have to do with the other? Just because you have to drink so much that you're not going to know the difference between Arham and Baruch Mordechai, you don't have to make a Zechel Chorben on Purim? And by the way, this is codified by the Shari Tshuva. On Purim, you don't make a Zechel Chorben because you have to drink so much that you don't know the difference between Arham and Baruch Mordechai. And let's talk about that halacha. Isn't that a very strange halacha? Let's say you landed from Mars. Right. And... And you wanted to send your kids to yeshiva, you wanted to see what Judaism was all about. So you went into a classroom in Chodesh Adar, and the Rebbe gets up, and he's telling 10-year-olds, Chayivin, is your Chayiv to get inebriated, and the kids are screaming, Chayivin, is your Chayiv, until you don't know, Adeloya, until you know, Benor. So you say, uh, yeah, I'm going back to Mars. I mean, that's, uh, what kind of uh, religion is this? We tell 12-year-old kids to get so drunk, that they don't know the difference between Ar Haman and Baruch Mordechai? I mean, the whole objective of Judaism is to use your mind and to always be in control of your desires. And here, we have a mitzvah in the Torah, basically, to give up your seichel and become like a behema gasa and be rolling in the street. So there's an amazing teaching of the Yosef Lekach. The Yosef Lekach was written by Rabbi Leazar Ashkenazi. He wrote on Chumash a sefer called uh, Masei Hashem. And I had this chust when I was in Krakow. The Eliezer Ashkenazi is buried in Krakow. He wrote a sefer on Chumash, Masei Hashem. He wrote on a Megillus Esther, one of the most important perushim called Yosef Lekach. And he explains as follows. He says the, the Yom Tif of Purim was different than any other Yom Tif. And that is the Yom Tif of Purim. The Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. There was no temple. Especially Mordechai, the enactor of Purim, he lived in the immediate aftermath of Chorban. He saw the Chorban. And you think the Jews in the times of Purim are going to sit down at a meal, Oh, Baruch Hashem, God saved our life! There's no Beis HaMikdash, there's no, there's no Shechina, their whole lives were destroyed. Sia and Ki, Beis Chayenu, Yushalayim was their life, and now it lay in ruins. They could not enjoy a Yom Tif of Purim, living in the aftermath of the Chorim Beis HaMikdash. So you, the only way they could be happy on Purim is if they drink so much until they forget about Yerushalayim. That's why Chazal enacted a mitzvah on Purim, how else could you rejoice on Purim, realizing that you're in the Golos, living in a life without a Beis HaMikdash? So Chazal made the following mitzvah. Chayiv inish lebesume lebepuraya ad lo yada me Beis HaMikdash. That's the mitzvah. Drink so much on Purim that you don't know about a Beis HaMikdash. 
So you'll ask, so then, but that's not what it says in the mitzvah. The mitzvah says, drink so much until you don't know the difference between Araham and Baruch Murch. The answer is, you think Chazal could actually write, drink so much until you don't know about the Beis HaMikdash? How would that, that would look so demeaning of the Beis HaMikdash. But that's what they meant. They wrote it in a Lashon Sagi Nahar. They wrote it in a clean way. Drink so much, you don't know the difference between Araham and Baruch Mordechai. A.K.A. what that really means is, drink so much that you could forget just for a day about the Beis HaMikdash. That's the mitzvah of drinking on Purim is Tenu Yayin Lamare Nefesh. Console the mourners. The only way we could rejoice on Purim is to drink until you forget momentarily about the Beis HaMikdash. Now, we understand why the one Suda a year you don't make a Zecher L'Chorben is Purim. Because the entire purpose of the Purim Suda is to have a moment where you don't remember, you don't think about the Beis HaMikdash. So, of course you're not going to make a Zecher L'Chorben at the Purim Suda. The whole purpose of Purim, it's a month, it's a time, it's a Zman to forget about the Beis HaMikdash. We don't think about it, we don't remember it. That's the, otherwise you can't rejoice on Purim. By the way, we once said in a shir, we put it on the sheet in number 23, that that's the pshat. Just like in the month of Av, we diminish our joy because we have to mourn for the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. So commensurate with that, kach, mishenichnas adar, we increase our joy, because in this month we forget about the Chorba Mesa Mikdash. It's zelu umazeh, it's one parallel to the other. The language is perfect, terminology is perfect. Just like in the month of Av, we diminish our joy because we mourn over the Chorba Mesa Mikdash. In the month of Adar, we're entitled to momentarily forget about the building of the Mesa Because if we would remember the Beis Mikdash, you can't have a Purim. A guy's going to dress up like... Uh, can be sad. Like... Donald Trump on Purim and dance all around, besimcha, thinking about Chorim Beis Hamikdash. The only way you could rejoice on Purim, it is a momentary reprieve from Chorim Beis Hamikdash. Comes the Kleisenberger Rebbe, and he says that this Yisoid, it comes out then that we've never really had a real Purim in our lives. We've never celebrated Purim. Because so long as the Beis HaMikdash lay in ruins, we never had a Purim. Chanukah we had. Chanukah was when there was a temple. Pesach, we had Pesach in our lives. We had Pesachim when there was a Beis HaMikdash. We had Shavuos. Every other Yom Tif, well, there was such a Yom Tif. There was once a Pesach. There was once a Shavuos. There was once a Rosh Hashanah and a Yom Kippur and even a Chanukah. But there was one Yom Tif, there never was. There never ever was Purim. Purim was never celebrated in the history of the Jewish people. Say, come on, I mean. Says the Kinnis, says the Kleisenberger Rebbe. What do we say in Kinnis? How could I ever be happy on Yom Tif? How can I ever rejoice on Purim? Until joy comes to your lot, God. But until the Beit Hamikdash is built... Rabbi Lazar Akhler says, we can't rejoice on Purim. Our Purim is like a cover-up. We need artificial, we need to take drugs, so to speak, on, excuse the expression, we need to imbibe alcohol in order to have Purim. That's not a Purim. No, no, can you imagine? The only way you can have Purim is if you get intoxicated. Otherwise, we're just like Avelim. Imagine you tell a guy, he just lost a close relative. He's suffering. And, uh, and he has to go to a wedding of a relative. So the guy, he can't, he can't get himself together. He's, he's so tzubrach and he can't celebrate. So the guy he goes off to the side. He drinks some schnapps. And he's dancing at the wedding. He's celebrating? He's, he's covering up. He's covering up his mourning in order to celebrate. We have never celebrated Purim in our lives the mitzvah to drink is only an artificial drug to be able to enjoy Purim. And I want to say the following chidosh. You know, every other mitzvah of Purim is midivrei neviyim. Megillah, the navi said. Shachmanus, the navi said. Metas avyayinim, suda. And all of a sudden we have a new mitzvah. Amar rava. You got to drink on Purim. Why isn't it in the Megillah? 
The answer is it's not really part of the Yom Tif. It's like uh, superimposed. It's like external to the Yom Tif. It's okay. It's Purim now. Let's quickly medicate ourselves so that we can enjoy the Yom Tif. That's what it is. And as we're going to see, well, what would that mean about Purim L'asud Lavai? And we're going to see a Chidosh Nifla. Comes the Kloisenberg Rebbe, and he says, perhaps, this could explain why we Dafka want to give Kavoy to Yerushalayim on the Yom Tif of Purim. After all, the Ran says, why is the wall determined by whether the wall stood in the times of Yeshua ben Nun? Says the Kloisenberg Rebbe, what Avera did they do in the time of Purim? They were Nene from the Suda. So what? What was wrong? What was wrong? They had um, Kehila Kashros from Brooklyn came. They said, we're not going to trust any, any Vad. We're going to bring in Tolna, Tarna, or whatever you want to call. Tarnapol, whoever you, and all of them together. Tartagal, Tarnagal, whatever you want to call them. And they're going to give the Heksher. It's all, it was Mamish 100%. So what was wrong with being Nene from the Suda? Says the Klezim Begrad, what, what was wrong? The base Hamikdash lay in ruins. Achashverosh is celebrating the fact that the Navi Yirmiyah prophesied in 70 years the will be rebuilt, and it wasn't rebuilt. So they're basically celebrating the downfall and the degradation of Yerushalayim. They were not Mala Yerushalayim Arosh Simchasehem. And then, when Hashem saved them and they did tshuva, they recognized that their main infraction was a lack of chashivas for Yushalayim and Eretz Yisrael. So the only way to rectify being nene from the Suda is that through the Suda they need to show kavod to Yushalayim. Because that was the chait. The chait was they didn't treat Yushalayim with honor. Now listen to this. It says the Kloisenberg Rebbe, when the, when the temple stood, Chazal tell us, no Jew ever went to sleep before midnight. What were they doing? Learning. What do you mean, what were they doing? The whole night you could be on your phone. It's amazing. You could spend the whole night flipping around back and forth. You could go from one news outlet to another. We were reporting the exact same news in the same Lashem, but you want to see it on the other. But, uh, obviously not. In times of uh, Chazal, the Gemara says that when the temple stood, they learned Torah. No Jew ever went to sleep before Chatzoy Salayla. And yet, now, all of a sudden, we have this mitzvah on Purim to drink. Why do we drink so much on Purim? Furthermore, says the Kozenberg Rebbe, the Ramah brings to the Maril that what, how do you fulfill Chayv Inish Basume? You drink a little extra, you go to sleep at the table, and that's how you fulfill Chayv Inish Basume. Wait a second. The way you fulfill Purim is by going to sleep and not knowing that it's Purim? That's a very, very good way to fulfill a mitzvah. Miss go to sleep and you don't even know you're there. The you blow the whole thing. Why would we go to sleep on Purim? And then the Ramah says, what should you do before your Purim Suda? Laihudim haisa oira, the simcha the Ramah brings, you're supposed to learn before your Purim Suda. By the way, we say over every year, there are two halachas about learning on Purim. Yeah. One, the Ramah says, you're supposed to learn before the Suda, Lahidim Haisa Aira, Aira Zutaira. Between the two Megillas. Number, that's another Zach. Number two, the Mishnah brings down that since you start learning Hilchas Pesach 30 days before, you start learning Hilchas Pesach and Purim. So you need to learn at the Suda, and you need to learn Hilchas Pesach and Purim. Says Rabbi Shlomo Kluger, kill two birds with one stone and learn Hilchas Pesach at the start of the Purim Suda. Fine. But the Kozimur Rebbe says, why do you start the Purim Suda by learning Tyra? So he says like this. He says, we're trying to contrast how bad the times are today. It used to be back in the day when the temple stood, a Jew was so misdabic to Tyra that he could not go to sleep before Chatzos because he was so orangutan in Tyra. Nowadays, without a temple, it is, our minds are so clouded and clogged up that we could learn, we open up a Sefer before the Purim Suda, we drink and we're out cold in the middle of the day. Look how we've fallen. It used to be people learned till Chatzais every night and now we open up a Sefer and people are out cold. Everybody knows that the best way to cure insomnia is you put a Sefer by your night table. It works every time, right? Why is that? It used to be nobody could sleep 
before Chatzoy Salayla. And here it is, it's Purim. We open up a Sefer, drink an Abyssal, and all of a sudden we're out cold. And the answer is because we're so depressed and we're so downtrodden, we're so broken that we live in an era without a base Hamikdash. The only way to recover from that is we have to drink and, uh, and uh, just uh, soothe ourselves and, and put ourselves out of the misery. The purpose of learning before the Purim Suda is so that we feel starkly what life used to be like, how we were so connected to learning, and nowadays you learn two minutes and you're out cold. Not at this year, but there are many, many shiurim where the Rabbanim do a very big service to their kihila. They knock them out within moments that the shir begins so deeply that an anesthesiologist could not replicate what what a Rav is able to do. It's a big chesed that Rabbanim do for people. Because uh, this way people are rested, and they feel good, and they're refreshed. It's a very big chesed. You know, rabbis have to be kind to the constituents. The biggest chesed you could give someone is a nap. What, what more could you give somebody than a nap? Friday night. Especially Friday night. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason, ah, Says the Kloisenberger Rebbe, you want to know why the Shulchan Aruch does not bring down the halacha, Mishanichnas Adar Marben Besimcha, he only brings Mishanichnas Av Marben Besimcha? Because we don't paskin Mishanichnas Adar Marben Besimcha. Mishanichnas Adar Marben Besimcha is not Noigea, it's Hilchasola Meshicha. When Mashiach comes, we'll be happy in Adar. Bizman Azeh, we're depressed. We're despondent. How could you be happy in Adar? We live in a world without a temple. Av? Yeah. Rea Mazle, we're very sad, we're very despondent, we, we're very uh, mournful in the month of Av. But the Shulchan Aruch does not bring down the Halacha, Misha Nichna, Sadar, Marben, Besimcha, because Bizman Azeh, we can't really be Besimcha in the month of Adar. Now watch this. Says Rabbi Shalom Azaman Orbach that if the chiv of drinking is basically, it's a way to drug yourself, to be able to rejoice in a yomtif that never was, there never was a Purim. Eich Eloiz Bepur, the Mekoinein says. How could you rejoice on Purim? Every other yomtif you could rejoice, you know why? Even though we're in Chorbin, you could rejoice on Pesach, at least you remember what a real Pesach was like. You could remember what a real Shavuos was like. So even though we don't have a real Shavuos, but there was such a thing as a real Shavuos, there never was a Purim. Purim, you got to drug yourself. Again, understand what I mean. Don't take that out of... Uh... <laughs> Says Rav Shom and Orbach, therefore in his opinion, when Mashiach comes, the mitzvah to drink is batal. In all likelihood, there will not be a mitzvah to drink when uh, Mashiach comes on Purim. And why it still remains, why is Purim the only young We're going to see. Mm. Says Rav Shalom it is very likely that the entire surah of the mitzvah will change. It will completely uh, be nishtani. He says, Chiyuv ze yishtana. The chiyuv to drink will change. Says Rav Shalom what do you greet your friend when you see him on Purim? Purim sameach. You know what that means? May you be zoicha to have a Purim that you could actually be happy. May you be zoicha to reach the stage in world history that you could actually rejoice on Purim. He said, it's a bakosha. Shenizke le Purim sameach v'shleimus. When is there going to be a real Purim? When Mashiach comes. Ah, you know why all the Yom and Tovim will be kambato but not Purim? Because all the Yom and Toivim, we had them already. So okay, we did it. Shine, shine celebrated a Yom Tif. We had all the Yom and Toivim. So Mashiach comes, they'll become Batal. But of course Purim can't become Batal. Because we never had Purim yet. <laughs> how, how could Purim become Batal? You can only be Mavatal something that was. Purim never was. Purim is only going to get started when Mashiach comes. Purim started in the time of the Chorban, but Eich Eloi is before. When Mashiach comes, then we're, st- we're just getting going with the Purim. The Yom Tif of Purim now is sort of a page out of the future, but we can't really enjoy it yet. Ah, says the Kleisenberger Rebbe. That's why Tzadik Ashkenaz 
they start their Purim Suda on the 14th and they continue into the 15th. Because they're sitting around in Cedarhurst or in Flatbush or where else, in Muncie or in Lakewood or wherever you guys are or even two houses down. And you're, trying to, you're sitting there on Purim and you're thinking to yourself, this is not a Purim. In the Chutz Laaretz, in the, in the Diaspora, you can't enjoy a Purim until at least you know that in Yushalayim there are shtikl besimcha, then and only then you could sort of tap in and start enjoying the Purim. So the Hasidei Ashkenaz, they celebrate on the 14th, but they make sure the Suda continues into the 15th so that at least they could taste a little bit of real simcha, knowing that at least in Yushalayim they're rejoicing a little bit. That's the Indian of continuing this, the Suda, says the Kozenberger Rebbe, into the 15th. And he says, even in a year where in Yushalayim they celebrate Purim on Friday, like this year, we you know what do Hasidim do? Now this is not... Don't try this at home. If you don't know what to do, don't do this. The Mishnah Baruch says Suda is before Chatzais. Yeah. But some Hasidim... They have the Suda later in the day. Shabbos comes. They put on the tablecloth. They bring the challah. They make Kiddush. Pyrus, Mapa, and Makadish. They still take the Purim meal into the night. Why do they do that? Because they, they just can't be happy on Purim. They can't be happy in the morning. The morning is... Purim, in a way, it's a depressing Yom Tif because it was enacted in the Chorbin. It's a Yom Tif of Chorbin. It's the only Yom Tif of Chorbin. It was the only Yom Tif that never emerged from the Chorbin. That is why all the Yom Tavim will become Batal. Purim cannot be Batal. Purim never started. You can't be Mavatal something that never kicked in yet. It's first going to get going, Bezos Hashem, this coming Friday when Mashiach comes. Finally, we're going to have a Purim. But until Mashiach comes, Purim never started. That's why we Dafka want to give Kavay to Yushalayim on Purim because the whole chit of Purim was that they were Nenar from the Sudha Hashem celebrating the fact that Yushalayim was destroyed. That's why they take it into the 15th. Because without the joy of Yushalayim, our joy is missing. And maybe why, that's why there's no Kroivitz for Purim in the bracha of Esemach David. Because Esemach David is talking about the building, uh, the coming of the Geula and the building of Yushalayim. Legabe that Purim is Chaser. Meaning, we have a Purim, but there is a dimension of Purim that is missing, and that is the dimension of Estemach David Avdecha Mehera Satsmich. Until that happens, Eich Eloiz Bapur. How could you rejoice on Purim? But we're still we're missing the Estemach David, and therefore they omitted the Kroivitz for Purim on the bracha of Estemach David. And that's the Indian of drinking on Purim. You can't rejoice. It's a way to remind ourselves that we need to overcome this idea that drags us down and that is the Chorben Beis HaMikdash. At the Purim Sud, it's the one time a year there's no Zeichel LeChorben. But let's suggest the following. You ready? Here's the Chiddush of the year. Is it possible that even before Mashiach comes you could have a real Purim? Say, so yeah, if you could figure out a way to compensate for the Chorben Beis HaMikdash, then technically you could have a real Purim. Is there any day of the year that it's as if the Beis HaMikdash is not destroyed? Sure there is. There's one day a year, one day a week, that we view it as if the Beis HaMikdash is Banoi. What day is that? Shabbos. Shabbos. We know that a Shavar Brachas, you say Devei Haser. Not on Shabbos. You don't, um, according to many, you don't say Devei Haser on Shabbos. Because Devei Haser is to fulfill Imlai Alis Yushalayim Arosh Simchasi. If I don't raise up Yushalayim on the, at the head of my Simcha. But on Shabbos, it's considered like the Beis HaMikdash is Banoi. There's no Avelos on Shabbos. So there's no Avelos on Shabbos. You don't say the Devei Haser. Oh! There's no Avelos on Shabbos! If Purim would ever come out on Shabbos! That's a Purim, as I darved Sazayin, that's a real Purim. So on a Purim, Meshulash, where Purim is coming out on Shabbos, so even though it's not Shabbos for us, but in Yushalayim, which is the center of the world, 
Purim is, so to speak, falling out on a day. That's above and beyond Korban. We know that on Shabbos, subject to, Shabbos is not subject to the Chet Ha'egel. The crowns that we lost for the Chet Ha'egel are returned to Kali Yisrael on Shabbos. The sin of the Eitz Hadas is considered rectified on Shabbos. Shabbos is above and beyond all Pagamim, all infractions, all diminutions. In fact, I have over here in number 20, on Shabbos we sing... Those who love Hashem. We say on Shabbos, those who love HaKadosh Baruch Hu, they yearn for the building of Binyan Ariel, but on Shabbos they rejoice. What's the Pshat on Shabbos? They rejoice because on Shabbos it's considered as if the Beis HaMikdosh is built. So on Shabbos is considered as if it's built. On Shabbos you can have a real Purim. That throws away everything we just said. So then it comes out though, maybe that, you know, there's a big discussion. When do you do Shalach Manis? When do you have Sudas Purim? When do you have Matanas Avyoinim? How come nobody discusses this year? When do you drink? Because you don't have to drink this year! Because this year Purim is like lost and lovely when there's no mitzvah of Shasia. The p- Pashib Shad is the mitzvah of drinking goes with the Suda on Sunday. But nobody discusses when to drink. It's because on a, on a year where a Purim falls out on Shabbos, it's interesting, Rabbi um, Moshe, Rab Moshe Wolfson quotes Avodas Yisrael that throughout the Megillah, the Lashon that is described about Purim is that Purim is like Shabbos. It keeps on saying on Purim, V'noyach me'oyeveyem, V'noyach b'arba asar, V'noyach b'chamisha asar, Kayomim asher nochu. Purim has like a Bechina of Shabbos. And even Mordechai wanted to enact that Purim should be a Yomtif. And Kala Yisona said no. Purim can't be a yamtif. So, so what? Mordechai was wrong? Mordechai said, let's make it a yamtif, and Kali Yisrael said, no, no thanks, it can't be a yamtif. No, Mordechai wanted it to be a yamtif already. Kali Yisrael said, so long as the Beis HaMikdosh is Bechor Banai, Purim can't be a yamtif. But the day will come that Purim will be a yamtif. When the Beis HaMikdosh is built, Purim will be a yamtif. The reason, says Ramesh Moshe Wilson, all the Mayadim will be bottle, but not Purim, is because Purim exists only in the Eliyasid Lavai. There is no Purim, Bizman Azah. Eich El is Bapur, we say. How could you rejoice on Purim? It's a yamtif of Chorbin. It always was Bechorbana. It never had a real Purim. Bizman Azah, Purim is not Bishlemos. But says, so what we're suggesting is that this year where Purim comes out on Shabbos, <coughs> which Shabbos is above and beyond, Ched Ha'egel, Ched HaMeraglim, Ched the Yitz Hadas, it's also above and beyond Chorben Beis HaMikdash. On this year you could have a real Purim. This type of scenario of Purim, it is such a powerful Purim. So Rav Wolfson has a similar idea. And he says, very interestingly, why in Eretz Yisrael you have one day Yom Tif? In Chutz Aretz, we have two days Yom Tif. So in Chutz Aretz, we're not on the Ma'adrega to assimilate, to take in the Kedushan one day. It's too intense for us. In Eretz Yisrael, they could handle the, the compact Kedushan one day. We, we got to take it easy. You know, we, we can't take the concentrate Yom Tif. We have to take like a diffused Yom Tif over two days. Says Rav Wolfson, on a year that Purim comes out on Shabbos, the Kedusha is so intense, the only way to handle it is if you diffuse it over three days. Why? Because this year, Purim, is like a Purim in the times of Mashiach. Because since it falls out on Shabbos, it is above and beyond Chorben, it's above and beyond Chorben Yushalayim, and Avelos Yushalayim, and the sadness of having a day that existed only in the Galas. Every other Yom Tif existed Bizman Binyan Beis HaMikdash. Purim existed only Bizman Chorban Beis HaMikdash. So this year you have an opportunity to have a flavor of a real Purim, a Purim of L'Asud Lavai. Kal Hayam Tovim Betelim, Purim Enam Asilim Libatel. And that's uh, the Indian of Shasiyah and Purim, and perhaps that's the reason why the mitzvah to drink was never legislated by the Nevi'im, because if it was legislated by the Nevi'im, it can't come to an end. 
the, the words of the Nevi'im are like Kedivei Torah Damya. It was legislated later by the Rabbonim. The Rabbonim said, okay, you can't enjoy the Purim, okay, so do what you got to do to make yourself happy. And uh, as soon as you don't need to do it anymore, you're going to stop doing it. Marv Rabbi may we be zoiche to the real Purim of La Asad Lavai, which will be a Yom Shabbos, a Yom Tif, for Ka Yisrael, a Biaskal Tzedek, then here we amen or amen, wishing everybody a freilich and param. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.